Hey guys, my name is David Parker and today we're going to be talking about load banks. We're in the generator business and this is a tool that I didn't have to start with. And kind of like when I made my canopy video, the video that I wanted to find on YouTube wasn't available. And today I want to make you the video about load banks if you're in the market for one that I wish somebody would have done for me. Kind of give you some understanding and some guidance and just some basic points about them. See it working, those kind of things. So this particular load bank is made by Universal Load Banks. I bought it from my local Yancey Cat dealer. This is a 650 kW load bank, 650,000 watts. The cables we use are typically good for 400 amps, and so if you were using this load bank in the 208 configuration, then you would need over 1,000 amps to achieve the 650 kW rating. So that's why we have parallel inputs. This load bank does both 208, 120, three phase, and it does 480, 277, three phase. You can't single phase load bank with this unit. The first question that you might have is what's a load bank and what's it used for? A load bank is basically just a big electric heater. In this case, it just has a bunch of heating elements in it, has a PLC that controls them, and we can go through five kW steps from zero all the way up to 650 kW in five kW steps. So if we're running a generator, we want to load bank it, or we want to put that generator under 90, 95%, 105, 100% of load and let it run. And then this identifies any problems that we could have with the load bank. It'd be kind of like if you wanted to have a car that you parked in your garage that you were gonna to have to drive to California if you had a problem. You just simply wouldn't go out to your car every week and crank it and let it idle for 30 minutes. You'd wanna put it in gear, get it out on the highway, get it up to speed. So this machine allows us to simulate the load that the generator would be under and accurately put it under that much load for any duration of time that we needed to do it. In the world of electricity, there are two kinds of loads. There's inductive loads and there's resistive loads. Basically, resistive loads are loads that are created by resistance or resistor. And the best example of that is probably if you ever, maybe growing up, you had one of those little heaters that you plugged in the wall, you could kind of see the coils inside, or you look down inside your hair dryer, that's a resistive load, so those little coils. Interestingly enough, the fan that blows the air across those coils is an inductive load. So it's made by creating a magnetic field and spinning a thing. And so the, the motion or the energy is induced by the coil winding to make the load, where if it's resistive, they, the coils resist the current going through them, and so it creates heat. Basically, resistive loads work out to, if it's a 125 kW generator at a power factor of one to one, a 125 kVA or 125 kW generator is the same on a resistive load, which is what the load bank is. All these generators out here, you see we have all different sizes and types, but that one load bank within 5 kW can precisely give us the load we need to test it to its maximum capacity. So how did I recognize that I needed a load bank? I was in the generator business for about 15 years. So I bought pretty much new generators. So the first three or four years didn't really have any issues. Well, when the generators hit about five years old, I started sending the generators out and occasionally I'd have issues with them because I didn't have a load bank and I didn't have any way to put that generator under load to test it properly. So once we got them back in after they'd been rented or we serviced them, we didn't have a way to put them under load. So then when we sent them out to the customer, you know, maybe the generator would idle fine all day long, but as soon as you put it under load, that belt was weak or the antifreeze coolant lines were weak. And once you put it under that load and that generator, that engine gets under all that pressure and temperature and heat, it stresses out the components of the engine and they would fail. All of our modern diesel generators have a lot of sensors and, and features in them that are continuously trying to cut them off. So we needed a way after my generators got some age on them, we needed a way to make sure that we didn't have a problem. So once we let, added the load bank and when we get a generator in and before we send it out now, we load bank it or we run it under load for two to three hours. And since then our failure rate on deployed generators when we run them out has gone nearly to zero because we do utilize this tool. So now we're just gonna hook it up to the building power so that you can see how it functions and get just a few ideas. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up the phases to the load bank. We're gonna use building power just so it'll be quiet and this video will be nice. Always, always, always you connect your ground first. If it was a 208 or something and, and we had a neutral load, we'd have a neutral, but we don't have that because we're only utilizing three phase uh, balance loads here. So then we're gonna connect each of the phases. So we've got our ground connected, so we're safe there. So we connect up the black phase 
and then we connect up the red phase and then we'll connect up the blue phase if you want to learn a little bit more about three phase power we've put out another video so we're kind of doing a power series videos and we put out one about our distro boxes and kind of in the middle of that video we talked a little bit about what three phase power was so it might be helpful if you want to go back and check out that video and so now i'm going to go turn on the breaker and energize this load because there is a fan in here and we need the fan to blow the air in the correct rotation and so this unit will tell us if we've got the rotation right this particular load bank is pretty sophisticated because it does have a plc that controls how all that is brought in you can put two of them together and you can connect them together with these daisy chains so that you could have if you wanted 1.2 megawatts or 1.3 megawatts you could just put two of these together and off of one display, you're able to control the whole system. I mentioned to you before that when you connect up three phase loads, you have to phase or rotate your loads, meaning that we get the fan moving in the right direction. So the first thing we do on this particular load bank and you do on any load bank is you'd have to rotate the fan. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply zero load or we're gonna apply load to get the fan running and we're gonna check the direction of the fan. On this particular load bank, we want the air to come in the bottom and blow the heat out the top. So we're gonna apply the load and so I could tell that it was going backwards so the nice thing about this particular load bank is we can change the direction of the rotation by just pushing that one button and we can go back and apply the load and now we can see that we've got the load going in the correct direction this particular load we have on a 150 amp breaker we'll probably want to stay under 100 kw we'll just ramp into like 60 kw of load to demonstrate how this unit works it's going to get loud so you can't hear me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply the load and then i'm going to go in here and i'm going to select in 5 kw steps and ramp the kw selection up to 50 kw to let you see and then obviously you could run it all the way up to 650 kw so so what we did is as you saw as we turned it on it ramped into about 4 kw that's that five horsepower motor and so we saw it ramp in and that was there so then when i added 10 15 5 kw load then you do load apply it applies that much load and then you saw the screen represent that so then when i went over here to this screen i kind of pointed at each one of these but in this column i think we we're up to like 60 amps and so you saw the current on each leg and then you saw the power on each leg. And then another neat thing that this particular machine does is it'll log the data and it'll show you when it's running, it'll show you like the time over time. And then you can also do things where you can say, we'll build in like a, a profile where it says we'll go to 50 kW, then 100 kW. Say you had a 300 kW machine, you could go 50, 100 and let it ramp into it, stay there for three hours and then ramp the load off. And so you can do all that automatically in the PLC. But basically the way we utilize it, and most people utilize it, is we just need to put that load on the generator. And by having 5 kW steps, we can test our 15 kW generators all the way up to our 300 kW generators. If we went over 150 kW on this cable and the breaker that we have connected, it would shut it off. Just the same way if I had this hooked up to a 100 kW generator, and went to like 105, 110, 115, it would shut that generator off. On some load banks, this one, I didn't buy the option. If you needed to be real precise about your loading, you can power the fan through a separate three-phase connection and then apply your loading and you get just five and not the fan loading. But ours, we don't care because we're just trying to test generators. All right, guys, well, thank you for watching this video. I know that this is sort of a complex subject and there's, there's way more information that we could go into. So if you have a question or a comment or something that we did in this video that we didn't you know, fully explain, or it would be helpful in you making a selection of going out and purchasing one of these or renting one of these or knowing which one it is, hey, leave us a comment below like and subscribe to the channel you know we'll do our best to provide the information that would be helpful for you and your application and understanding about load banks